Family Theater presents Jimmy Durante and June Haver. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents June Haver and Jimmy Durante in Rhapsody in Bop. <laughs> Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama starring Jimmy Durante as Jimmy and June Haver as Sally in Rhapsody in Bop. Yes, sure, what'll it be? Uh, three gallons of gas, please. Three gallons of gas? In your gas tank or in your cigarette lighter? Please, Junior, please, no remarks. Well, I just couldn't help that one. Son, I have three gallons my way clean across. What's that young lady crying about? Oh, you mean the girl by the oil can? You Westerners talk awful funny. <laughs> I mean that girl by the oil can. Well, I don't know what she's crying about. You find out. I can't stand to see a pretty girl cry. What goes on here? Young lady, that's no way to carry on. <laughs> well, you can carry on the way you want to. This is my way. I presume you're not doing that just to get your pretty little nose red? No. Oh, he said he was a talent scout. He said he could get me a screen test in Hollywood. Uh, well, I gave him the money to buy my ticket to California. And that's the last you saw of him? Yes. There, there, child. How much did he take you for? Seventy-five dollars. Why, it's an outrage. It's grand loss, sir, knee. That's the way they got it here in the paper. <laughs> they got a dash between loss, sir, knee. <laughs> anyway, uh, what's your name? Sally Shannon. Sally Shannon. Seems like I've heard that name before. Glad to know you, Sally. I'm Jimmy Nazola. Wait, I'll give you my card. Thank you. Jimmy Nazola, pianos wrecked while you wait. <laughs> World's greatest ivory buster, Dixieland style. Permanent address, billboard, Cincinnati. That's me. Well, how do you do, Jimmy Nazola? How do you do? Uh, is this your suitcase here? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can catch up with that talent scout. Come over to the car and meet Aunt Harriet. Who's Aunt Harriet? A sweet little old lady who joined me in Topeka, Kansas. Oh, well, where's your car? Right here. This fine Pierce Arrow. Oh. Good gracious, that thing? Sister, you're speaking of the jalopy I love. <laughs> well, it ought to be in a museum. Tut, tut, child, wait a minute. There's a lot of mileage in that old coffee grinder yet. I keep saying with my fingers crossed. Well, where's Aunt Harriet? I don't see any Aunt Harriet. She's asleep in the back seat. I'll wake her up. Oh. Aunt Harriet, wake up, wake up. Uh-huh, three gallons of gas. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yeah. Well, where are we, Jimmy? We're just outside of oh. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Move over, Aunt Harriet. We've got another passenger. Well, well. Oh, a pretty young lady. Aunt Harriet, this is Sally Shahanan. How do you do, Sally? Hello, Aunt Harriet. I'll put your suitcase away. My, but it's heavy. What do you got in it? Well, sheet music mostly. You see, I play the piano, too. Well, imagine that. <laughs> You're among friends, my dear. You see, my husband, when he was alive, used to be a piano tuner. Oh, how interesting. You two kids get acquainted. I've got to check my... Earth. Are you going to California, too? Mm, yes, Aunt Harriet. Yes, I am. Why, child, you've been crying. Yes, I I've lost all my money. Oh, goodness gracious, you too. What do you mean, you too? You too? Yes. My daughter Bessie wanted me to come to California for a visit. She sent me the bus fare and, well, I lost it. Oh, what a shame. Bessie and her husband are not very well off, so I, I didn't want to ask Bessie for any more. Oh. So you're hitchhiking? Yes, thanks to Jimmy Nazola. He stopped in Topeka for three gallons of gas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's a mighty fine man, Sally. Oh, his talk is tough, but his heart is tender. Mm, he does seem nice, awfully nice. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Easy on that hood. 
<laughs> He's so kind-hearted, giving people lifts. Why, do you know, all the way across Kansas, we had a widow with three children and a pet pig. Oh, it was love at first sight. You mean Jimmy fell in love with the widow? No, the pig fell in love with Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Say, this is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, of course. <laughs> Things are never as bad as they first seem to be. Maybe I'll get to California after all. There's no maybe about it, young lady. You'll get there. I have money in the bank in New York, so when I get to Hollywood, I'll be all right. I know people there, too. We'll get there. Don't worry about that. Okay, mister. Uh... Are you girls all set? Yes, yes, Jimmy, all set. Home, James. Then we're off in a cloud of oil smoke. <laughs> Sally, what did that fellow look like, that phony talent scout? The man who stole my money? Well, he said his name was... Never Jim. mind his name, he can change that. What did he look like? Oh, he was tall and had red hair. Wore a loud, flashy sport coat. Tall, red-headed, and a loud sport coat. Mm -hmm. I'll watch out for him. Suppose you find him. What'll you do? I'll make him cough up your dough. In my younger days, I was the champion fighter of Peddler School 29. Well, what if he has a gun? I was also the champion runner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sally, outside of my husband, rest his soul, who was always gentle and patient, I don't think I've ever known a kinder man than Jimmy here. Mm, you're absolutely right, Aunt Harriet. Jimmy is just a darling, <laughs> always helping us. Oh, wait you. a minute, kids. You make me blush clean to the end of my nose, and that weakens me. <laughs> it takes too much blood out of my system. <laughs> you know, I don't deserve any credit. Oh, that's what you think. Well, I was brought up on the east side... And there were six of us kids. My dad was a day laborer. My mom washed and ironed and cooked and mended and scrubbed. But she kept our family together. I knew you had a wonderful mother. She made us share things with each other. She used to tell us kids, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Poor people know that. When you need help, don't go to rich people. Go to poor people. Poor people know what it means to be hungry. They'll squeeze out an extra dollar somehow to give it to somebody who needs it. That's what she told us. So, I don't deserve any credit, kids. I'm just doing what I was taught to do by the kindest person I ever knew, my mother. Oh, yes, sir. What can I do for you? Three gallons of gas. In three gallons? Three gallons. What's the matter? Ain't you got that much? Oh, yes, sir, you bet. Jimmy, we're going in for a cup of coffee now. Okay, Sally, but go easy on the eats. We will, Jimmy. Uh, don't go off without us. Not a chance. I'll be with you kids in just a minute. Okay. Three gallons exactly. Yes, the first pierce hair I've seen in a long time. You've got quite an antique there. Don't belittle my fine car, my fine befettered friend. I'll have you know that they don't make cars like this anymore. No, they don't, sir. Oh, that was a fine car in this day. Some of the modern cars are pretty nifty, too. Take a look at that blue convertible right over there. I was just giving it a gander. Boy, it's a dilly. Yeah, it belongs to a big Hollywood talent scout. I suppose, though... Huh? A talent scout? Yeah, Jimmy McGuire. Oh, he's a nice guy. He's not stuck up at all. Everybody calls him Red. He wouldn't have red hair, would he? <laughs> well, what do you think? Talent scout. Tall, red hair, flashy sport coat. What kind of clothes does this guy wear? Dignified and conversatory? <laughs> oh, oh, brother, not Jimmy McGuire. <laughs> He's got red socks, yellow shirt, green slacks, and a sport coat that looks like a rainbow. That I'd like to see. Where is this walking Easter egg? He went to that little store across the highway there. Thanks, mister. I got business in that store. I better leave this door open. I may be coming back in a hurry. Jump in, kids, quick. We gotta scram out of here. Jimmy, what on earth? Sally, Aunt Harriet, pile in, I'll tell you later. But quit pushing me, I'm getting in. Jimmy. What happened back there at the filling station? Yes, what scared you? And how did you get that lump on your jaw? Well, kids, now that I've got my breath back, I guess it's safe to slow down and tell you the good news. What good news? Here, Sally, count these bills. Oh, <gasps> good heavens, he must have robbed a bank. 
50, 60, 70, 75 dollars. That's your money, Sally. I caught up with your talent scout. Oh, Jimmy, you didn't. I sure did. With your description, how could I miss? Tall, red-headed, and a sport coat like a rainbow. Didn't I tell you Jimmy was wonderful? What did the man say when you asked him for the money? Yes. Well, after I chased him out of the back door of the store, across a potato patch, threw a mess of cactus into an old corral, he didn't have any breath left to say anything. He shoves his wallet at me, I takes out 75 smackers, and I hands it back. Uh, well, then what did you say to him? Nothing. I didn't have any breath left either. Oh, Jim, you got my money back. You're so wonderful. I'm going to give you a great big... Mm. You know what? I should have given back that to you one dollar at a time. This one is on me, Jimmy. I'm rich now. Service man. Yes, ma'am. Three gallons of gas, yes, please. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, Sally. You're a pal. Oh, I owe you a lot more than that, Jimmy. And while we're stopping, let's eat. A real dinner this time. Oh, yes. Let's do that. I'm starved. I could eat a porterhouse or two myself. Wait a minute. Wonder, wonder where that police car is going. Oh, I guess they're still hunting that crazy man. Crazy man? Yeah, didn't you hear it over the radio? A crazy man held up Red McGuire, the famous movie talent scout, and got away with a lot of money. Oh. Oh! When did that happen? Oh, just this afternoon. Wait, I think the news broadcast is on now. I've got my radio right here. Maybe they'll have something about it. Was passed by the Senate this morning. Police have not yet captured the maniac who assaulted James Wellington McGuire, prominent Hollywood talent scout. The attack took place on Highway 66 near Sageview. Strangely enough, although McGuire's wallet contained a large sum of money, the man took only $75. That's how they knew he was crazy. McGuire is on his way to the Happy Valley Festival, where he'll attend the Festival of the Bees. The cattle market today remained... Well, that's all of that. The lunchroom is right over there if you folks want to eat. That's funny. I don't feel hungry anymore. Strange. Neither do I. How about you, Aunt Harriet? Well, what do you know? No appetite. In that case, we'd better nose you along. Mister, the radio said McGuire was going to Happy Valley. Oh, sure, to the Festival of the Bees. It's a music contest, string trios, Beethoven, Bach, and Brahms. Beethoven, Bach, and Brahms. Oh, classical stuff, huh? But where is Happy Valley? Well, you turn right at the next stoplight and drive about 12 miles. There's going to be a lot of excitement there today. Son, how right you are. How right you are. <laughs> Well, kids, I think this is Happy Valley. Yes, I'm pretty sure this is it, Jimmy. Now what do we do? First, we gotta find the Festival of the Bees. I'll stay in the car while you and Aunt Harriet hunt up McGuire. Tell him the whole story and give him back the 75 bucks. They say he's a nice man, and I'm sure he'll understand. Oh, I hope so. Well, just in case he's still hot under the collar, we'll keep the motor running. In case. Look, this must be the place here, this big auditorium. We'll park here and find out. I'll ask that girl. Oh, young lady, is this Happy Valley? Yes, this is Happy Valley. <laughs> this must be where I came in. Is this the Festival of the Bees? Yes, sir, this is it. You don't seem to be very happy about it. Well, would you be happy if you lost your chance to play in the festival? No, not in the festival. But tell me, what is this festival? Well... They're having a contest in there for the best string trio in this county. And the Happy Valley trio can't play. How do you know? Because I'm in it. I'm Winnie Jackson, the violinist. I'm here. Our cellist is here. But our pianist, he's got the measles. <laughs> Gee, that's tough. Oh, the contest is going on right now. And when it comes time for Happy Valley to play, we can't go on. No pianist. Winnie, by a strange co-accident, I happen to have to be a piano player. Now, now, Jimmy, don't get into anything. We may have to leave town, remember? Mister, you're a pianist. Can you play Beethoven, Brahms, and Bach? Winnie, Jimmy, and Zola can play anything with notes on it. Oh, that's wonderful. Come on backstage. I, I hope we're not too late. Jimmy, where are you going? I'm going... I'm going to man the keyboard in the Battle of the Bees. You go hunt up McGuire, kids. I'll be back later. Oh, dear. 
that man will get himself in trouble yet. Not if we can help it. Come on, Aunt Harriet. We've got to see Mr. McGuire before Jimmy walks out on that stage. <laughs> That's how it happened, Mr. McGuire. And here's your $75. Jimmy's not crazy, Mr. McGuire. He's the kindest man in the world. <laughs> oh, you're not angry? Oh, for all that good publicity? Of course not, Miss Shannon. Oh. <laughs> Besides that, I, I've been mistaken for the same man several times before. Oh, then you understand. Certainly. It's the sport coat. My wife warned me not to wear it. Well, we're sorry we had to call you out here in the lobby. Oh, yes, right in the middle of the contest. Oh, that's all right, ladies. I I'm very fond of classical music, but three solid hours of it gets a little monotonous. Well, that was the uh, Rockville String Trio. I believe Happy Valley is next. By the way, where is this man, Jimmy? Mm, well, get set for a shock, Mr. McGuire. Jimmy's playing piano for the Happy Valley String Trio. No kidding. Well, that I want to see. Happy Valley's my hometown, you know, so come on in, ladies, and we'll all root for Happy Valley. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen... The final string trio to perform in this great festival of the bees, Beethoven, Bach, and Brahms, is our trio from Happy Valley. The violin, Winifred Jackson, cello, Howard Carberry, and piano, James Nazola. They will play for their first number that lovely selection from Beethoven entitled Minuet in G. Wait a minute, wait a minute, stop the music. I got an idea. Who will be with you when I'm far away, when I'm far, far away from you? Say now, who will be with you when I'm far away? Let me hear that high note. What up there? Who's gonna tell you all those pretty things? Who's gonna buy you all those diamond rings? Say, who will be with you when I'm far away? When I'm far, far away, let me hear that bell. Say now, who will be with you when I'm far away? When I'm, let me hear that high note. Say now, who will be with you when I'm far away? When I'm far, far away from you. You know, I went to the circus last week, and while I, while I was there, I saw an elephant looking down at a little mouse. And the elephant was saying to the mouse, look at the size of me and look at the size of you. Why, you're nothing but a wretched, insignificant little shrimp. The little mouse looked up at the elephant and said, listen, I've been sick. Who will be with you when I'm far away, when I'm far, far away from you? Say now, who will be with you when I'm far away, when I'm far, far away from you? Say, who will be with you when I'm far away? Let me hear that high note again. What a band, what a band. You know, uh, last night I'm walking down Hollywood Boulevard, just commuting with nature, when I accidentally bumped into a guy. Well, being a gentleman, I apologized, but he wasn't satisfied. He demanded an autopsy. So I ups to him. I face with my right, I face with my left, I seize an opening, I'm flat on my back. <laughs> so picking myself up from the gutter, I put a chip on my shoulder, I said, knock it off, knock it off. Five minutes later, the chip was still there. But the shoulder was gone. Who will be with you when I'm far away? When I'm far, far away from you? Yes, sir. When I'm far, far away from you. Mr. Nazola, Mr. Nazola, how could you do such a thing? How? Could you dare desecrate a great musical masterpiece? What's the matter, Junior? Did we miss a note somewhere? Oh, oh you syncopated wretch, you. You've ruined Happy Valley's chance of winning the festival. The audience didn't seem to think so. Did you hear the hand we got? This is the festival of the bees, Mr. Nazola. Uh, tell me, please, which one of the bees was that? That was all three of the bees. Bob, Boogie, and Basin Street. <laughs> You're supposed to play two numbers. I know, but this gentleman don't like our interpretation. 
go. We'll never live this down. I refuse to let Mr. Nazola go out on that stage to assassinate another classic. Just a minute, Cedric. Uh, oh, oh, Mr. McGuire, I'm so sorry. I don't apologize, Cedric. That last number was sensational. But if it's classical music you want, let this young lady play, huh? You mean Sally? Yes, Aunt Harriet tells me that Miss Shannon specializes in classical music. Shannon? Are you Sally Shannon? The concert pianist? Yes, I'm Sally Shannon. You mean she's famous? Oh, certainly she's famous. Seven concerts last season with the Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra. No. <laughs> yes. Miss Shannon, the Happy Valley Trio would consider it a great honor to have you play the next selection with them. Well, I'll be glad to. Okay, it's a deal, and I'll introduce this little lady myself. Come on, Sally. I'm with you, Jimmy. Ladies and people, your attention, please. That first number we did was just a wee tiny bit modernized. Modernized. <laughs> they can't stick to Ranny. But the second selection will be strictly square. At the ivories on this number is the well-known concert pianist, Sally Shannon. Get in, kids. This old Pierce Sarah will have to be rolling along. All right, Jimmy. I'm so glad we helped Happy Valley win the contest. We didn't win it, Sally. You won it. <laughs> you both helped to win it, and you were both wonderful. Oh, thank you, Aunt Harriet. You were in the act, too. Without your encouragement, we never could have done it. That's right, Aunt Harriet. <laughs> uh, till I turn the page, <laughs> don't I? Uh, Aunt Harriet, uh, you yes. gave M M McGuire... What did I do? I'd like to take that again. Oh. <laughs> you gave McGuire back a 75 frock skin. Yes, and everything is all right now. Yeah, that means we're broke again. Oh, no, Jimmy, we're not broke. What do you mean, Aunt Harriet? I found my money, the money I thought I'd lost. You did? Where? Well, I jumped up and down so hard applauding you and Sally that I shook it loose from uh, somewhere inside my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm the rich one, and from now on, everything is on me. And Harriet, you found the frock skins, huh? <laughs> Am I a lucky guy to have friends like you and Sally? Well, goodbye, happy Valley. <laughs> Hey! Hey, wait! Hold on a minute! Oh, Jimmy, stop! It's Mr. McGuire! Maybe he wants to pop me one? Well, okay. You folks not leaving, are you? Oh, yes, Mr. McGuire. We're heading for California. Mr. Mack, I'm sorry I chased you through that tater patch. <laughs> <laughs> Think nothing of it, Jimmy. To show you there are no hard feelings here, I want to give you this sport coat that caused all the trouble. Oh, for me? Gee, thanks. <laughs> you were sensational this afternoon. You and Sally both. I have a little contract here. I want you to sign it. Mr. McGuire, was my piano pounding that good? No, Jimmy, this contract isn't for your piano playing. Oh, of course not. It's for Sally Natch. Here, Sally. Oh, oh, I'm so excited. Who has a pen? No, no, Sally, this contract isn't for you either. Oh, my star's alive. You don't mean it's for me. Oh, no, Aunt Harriet, it's for Jimmy's Pierce Arrow. Oh. Yes, this is just the car I want for a scene in one of our pictures. Now, here's a hundred dollars advance rental, Jimmy, and sign right here. Oh, a century oh. note. Quick, give me that pen. Yes. There you are. Thank you. Oh. Now, I want all of you to look me up when you get to California, and I'll see that you get a screen test, Sally. Oh, so long, folks. Goodbye. A screen test, Sally. So long, McGuire. Well, what do you know? Now, laugh at my piss arrow. I take it all back, Jimmy. It's wonderful, too. Oh, Sally. Yes, Jimmy? Uh, give me the high sign when you see a filling station. We'll need another three gallons of gas. <laughs> And here, once again...
once again stepping out of character are June Haver and Jimmy Durante. Thank you, Howard. Jimmy, it's been lots of fun being on the show with you tonight. Thanks, Junie. You know, I enjoyed being with you and, and being on the family theater. Of course, I think it's a wonderful idea getting together with your loved ones every day and praying together as a family. Would it embarrass you, Jimmy, if I asked the question? Well, Junie, that all depends. Well, this is about prayer. What do you think is the best way to pray, Jimmy? Do you whisper it or, or talk right out or just sort of think it? Well, I would say you can pray all three ways, June. But I like to speak right up and say, thanks, dear Lord, for giving me a wonderful life and wonderful friends. And thanks for all the blessings you've given me. That's a nice way to put it, Jimmy. That's what I like about family theater, June. It reminds us every week how important prayer is. And in particular, how important praying together as a family can be. That's the way I feel, too. And I think everybody listening in will agree with that, Jimmy. Junie, to all the family theater audience, I want to say thanks. And I want to finish with that one line by which the program has become so well known. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. <laughs> From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Jimmy Durante and June Haver in Rhapsody in Bob with Verna Felton as Aunt Harriet. Others in our cast were Howard McNear, Lamont Johnson, Martha Shaw, Robert O'Sullivan, and Jack Raymond. The script was written by Harry Lawrence with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. Transcribed, this series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which responds to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Howard Culver expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at this same time when Family Theater will present... Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>